classification of malocclusion. Angle classification. A classification of malocclusion introduced by Edward Hartley Angle based on the anthropocere relationship of the maxillary and pantibular first permanent molars. Angle's assumption when formulating this classification was the first uh, maxillary permanent molar always is in the physiological correct position and the variability comes from the mandible. Angle's classification, which is still widely popular, only can serve as a framework as it doesn't take into account many other important relationships in the anteroposterior. Example, overjet, canine relation, Transverse example, bocolingual crossbite or vertical example, overbite planes of space. It also doesn't identify intra arch problems such as crowding, spacing, rotation, missing, or impacted teeth. Angle classification divided into class one malocclusion, which is neutral occlusion. A malocclusion in which the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar occludes with the mesiobuccal cusp of the maxillary first permanent molar. The term class 1 is sometimes used incorrectly as a synonym of for normal occlusion. Although in, real, in reality, it only signifies a normal relationship of maxillary and mandibular first molars in the sagittal plane. Class II malocclusion, or it is called distal occlusion or post-normal occlusion. A malocclusion in which <clears throat> the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar occludes posteriorly means distal to at least half of the cusp to the major buccal cusp of maxillary first permanent molar. The severity of the deviation of this deviation from class 1 molar relation to a class 2 usually indicated in a fraction or multiple of the major distal width of the Premolar crown cusp or unit. Usually, it is subdivided into class 2 division 1 and class 2 division 3. While the class 3, the class 3 malocclusion, it is called Mesial occlusion or pre-normal occlusion. It is a malocclusion in which the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar occludes anteriorly mesial by at least half cusp to the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first pen molar. The same conventions as described before are used to indicate the severity of the division of the class one molar relation. The molar relation. Here we see the major buccal developmental group of the lower first molar, permanent molar, occlude with the major buccal cusp of the maxillary first permanent molar. The class 2 division 2. As we said, that the class 2 malocclusion divided into class 2 division 1 and the class 2 division 2. The class 2 division 1, it is a class 2 with a proclined maxillary anterior teeth here, resulting in an increase in the overjet with normal or mostly deep bite. The class 2 division 2, it is the other type of a class 2 malocclusion. Typically, with maxillary central incisors tip palatally or shortly anterior, a short anterior lower face height. There is a short face anterior height. 
an excessive overbite and normal or decreased overjet. The overjet may be normal or decreased. There are three types of class two division two malocclusion that can be distinguished and associated with the class two. Based on differences in spatial conditions in the maxillary dental arch. The type A, where the four maxillary permanent incisors are tipped palatally. The four incisors are tipped palatally without the occurrence of crowding. The type B of class two division two, where the maxillary central incisors are tipped palatally and the maxillary lateral incisors are tipped labially. The type C of class two division two, the four maxillary permanent incisors are tipped palatally with the canines are tipped labially. Class three malocclusion, or it is called major occlusion or pre-normal occlusion as we said. Here you notice that uh, the buccal groove of the mandibular fair smaller, that should be here, occludes anteriorly to the, um, or medial by at least half cusp to the major buccal cusp of the maxillary fair smaller. The same convention as described before, it indicates the severity, I mean when there is half or one cusp of the first premolar, which uh, recognized or determines the severity of class 3 malocclusion. Here, the class 3, where the mesobuccal developmental group of the lower first permanent molar occludes more anteriorly or medially to the mesobuccal cusp of the maxillary first permanent molar. Canine relations. Before we talk about the canine relations, there are important notes. Usually, if we, take, we talk about angles classification, we will talk about the first parent molar, not the primary. When we say angles classification, it angles usually related to the molar permanent molar teeth, not the primary, only the permanent first molar. When there is missing of the first permanent molar or there is a drifting as a result of any early loss of deciduous molars, so we shift to another classification, which is either canine classification or incisors classification. And there is no canine or if there is no canine or uh, canine or uh, or severely mild post canine, so we shift to another classification, which is incisors classification. Okay. Canine classification or canine relation. The canine class one. It is normal canine relation. When the distal surface of the mandibular canine is within within the first premolar premolars width of the medial surface of the maxillary canine, or it is the normal canine relation when the tip of the upper canine, canine is located in the embrasure area between lower canine and first premolar, or the medial slope of the upper canine coincide with the distal slope of the lower canine in occlusion. While the class two uh, canine relation usually there is abnormal canine relation in which the lower canine will be more backward from normal canine relation in occlusion. So the distal surface of the mandibular canine is distal to the medial surface of maxillary canine by at least a width of the first premolar. Thus, the class three canine relation, where there is an abnormal canine relation in which the lower canine will be more backward when the Lower canine will be more forward than from the normal canine relation. So the distal surface of the mandibular canine in medial 
to the medial surface of maxillary canine by at least a width of the first premolar. Incisors classification. The incisor relation doesn't always match the buccal segment relation since much of orthodontic treatment is focused on the correction of the incisor relationships of the molars or mar relationships. It is helpful to have a classification of the incisor relationships. The term used are the same, but it is not angles classification, although there is a deriv uh, derivation. In a clinical practice, the incisor classification is usually found to be more useful than angles classification. The incisor classification here, it is normal overjet or overbite. The lower incisor in class one, the lower incisal edges occlude with or lay immediately below the cingulum plateau, middle part of the palatal surface here, the cingulum plateau of the upper central incisors. While at class two, the lower incisal edges lay posterior to the to the cingulum plateau of the upper incisor upper incisors. Also, this divided into two. Class two division one, when the upper central incisors are proclined or of an average inclination with an increased overjet, there is an increased overjet. In a class two division two, the upper central incisors are retroclined less than 100, 105 to the maxillary plane. The overjet usually of an average amount the overjet, but may be increased. Sometimes it is increased. Or sometimes mostly increase in deep bites. When there is deep bite, there will be increase also with the increase in the overjet. This is class two. So the class two division one of the incisors there is proclination and increase overjet and deep bite, while a class two division, class two incisors division two, the upper central incisors are retroclined, less than 105. The overjet is usually an average amount of overjet, but may be increased sometimes, sometimes with deep bite, increase over bite. In class three, the lower incisal edges lay anterior to the single plateau. Here, the lower incisal edge lay anterior to the single plateau. I mean, there is a reverse overjet. So the overjet may be reduced or reversed. So the, the incisal relation may be edge to edge or reverse overjet. So the overjet may be reduced or reversed. It means negative overjet. Classification <clears throat> of primary teeth. Depend on the relation between terminal plane present in the maxillary and mandibular deciduous posterior teeth. The terminal plane. The distal proximal surface of maxillary mandibular second primary molars it is the be, being the distal terminal plane of the primary dentition. The relation between the maxillary and mandibular terminal planes in early mixed dentition is thought to determine the, a degree and the eventual relationship between the maxillary and mandibular first permanent molars. So these primary teeth will give us uh, an idea that the, about the uh, future um, maxillary and mandibular permanent first molar that are going to be erupted in the future. The distal step. Here is the distal step. It is a situation in which the terminal plane of the mandibular second deciduous molar is situated posteriorly here situated posteriorly to the maxillary deciduous molar. This situation is thought to be predisposed to, but not necessarily predictive of class two relationship of the first permanent molar that are going to be erupted in the future. 
the flash terminal plan. It is an end-to-end -end relationship between the distal proximal surfaces of the maxillary and mandibular primary molars, usually leading to the class 1 or a class 2 relationship between the maxillary and mandibular first pane of molar that are going to be erupted. The medial step here, as we see, the medial step, it is a situation in which the terminal plane of the mandibular second deciduous molar is situated anteriorly to the, that of the maxillary uh, second primary molar. Depending on the severity of the medial step, this relationship is thought to predispose but is strictly speaking not predictive of either to class 1 or class 3 relationship of the maxillary and mandibular permanent first molar that are going to be erupted in the future. Molar relation. The molar relationship and the primary dentition can be, as we said, divided into three types, which is the medial step, distal step, and the flash terminal plane or straight terminal plane. Clinical implications and variations. The first pennant molar may erupt into, these are the primary molars and these are the permanent first molars. So the primary second molars here and here the permanent maxillary first permanent molars. Here the primary, here the permanent. The first permanent primary molars may erupt into the following occlusion relationship in the future. Here the red line, there is minimal uh, growth differential and the solid uh, black line, this is a forward growth of the mandible. So the distal step between the primary second molars can develop when there is a minimal growth into class 2 and when there is a forward growth of the mandible developed to end to end. While the flash terminal plan between the primary second molars, when there is minimal growth can develop into end to end molar relation of the permanent first molar or can develop into a class one relation. The flash terminal plan can develop into class one permanent first molar relation. While the medial step, here the medial step between the primary second molars, if there is a minimal growth of the mandible differential growth, there will be a uh, it will develop into a class one molar permanent first molar relation or can develop in the future into the class three relation. Medial step into either class one if there is minimal differential growth or if there is forward growth of the mandible, it will develop into class three. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much.